Hello, in this video, we're going to find the marginal distribution of a Poisson gamma mixture distribution. And let's develop it first, and then we'll get into the nitty gritty. Here, we're going to let x given lambda be a Poisson, and of course, with parameter lambda. And we're going to let lambda be distributed with a gamma distribution of alpha and beta. Now, the only example that I've read about using this model is in the actuarial world where they they say that x given lambda is the number of claims in a time interval given a risk level and then risk of course or lambda is the risk insured and so they model this piece with the Poisson and this piece with the gamma and so that is this and that is the gamma so now to start developing the marginal distribution of X by itself, I like to think of it like this. So first let's look at the joint density for X and lambda, which is this. Now notice that we only have X given lambda and lambda, you know, modeled. So here, but this can be written as this conditional probability. And then we know what each of these pieces are. This is the Poisson and this is the gamma. And then what I want to do is kind of group the lambdas together and then the non-lambdas. So the X, of course, and the gamma of alpha, beta of alpha, those don't have anything to do with the lambda. And then these pieces will be combined with these pieces into this. Now, the way that I like to think about a gamma distribution. Notice, notice here's the gamma. And I have the beta in the denominator. Now some people like to have this beta in the numerator, and it's fine either way. But we, or I like to have it in the denominator. So this piece needs to go down. So you raise it to the minus half power. So then it goes down. And then you can group this into beta plus one over beta, you know, to the minus one half, but the minus one half flips that and you get this. So this, this is the joint density. Okay. Now, when we find the marginal distribution of X, what we do is we introduce a variable lambda and then integrate it out. Okay. But this we just found was the joint density for X and lambda. And so if we plug that in here, and I already factored out the pieces that don't deal with lambda and the pieces that do deal with lambda. Now this right here is looks like a gamma distribution again, where this is the new beta parameter, and then alpha plus x is the new alpha parameter. And then, so if we have the right constant out front, and then take it times its reciprocal, then this piece integrates to one. And so that piece in front is what this is. So that's the, you know, that's gamma of alpha plus x. And then this is the, the beta, you know, the new beta, beta over one plus beta raised to the alpha plus x. Then what we do next is we put that here and these, of course, stay down. Now this alpha um, is combined with this alpha. So this product can be beta over one plus beta to the alpha times beta over one plus beta to the x. And so to the x part is right here. Now to the to the alpha part, we take it up, you know, set it times, and then this one cancels with that beta, and we're left with this. Now, this is very much like a negative binomial. Okay, so it's it's actually in the form of a negative binomial. Now, one difference though, alpha can it doesn't have to be an integer. And if that's the case, then this becomes what's called a general binomial coefficient, as opposed to just a binomial coefficient or you know regular combinations. But it's still in the form of a negative binomial. Okay. So let's find the mean and the variance of this. So the mean of x is the mean of this conditional, but this is Poisson, so the mean is lambda. Expected value of lambda is alpha beta. 
Yeah, because this is a gamma distribution. Now the variance, we write it in the total variance uh, formula here. And this is a Poisson, and the variance is lambda again. And this, of course, is lambda. Now the expected value of lambda, remember when lambda is a gamma distribution, is alpha, beta. The variance is alpha plus beta squared. Then you can combine that into alpha, beta times beta plus 1. Now, here, here's an interesting note that if we were to use the negative binomial notation, so the expected value of x, you know, assuming that it follows this negative binomial, is r times 1 minus p times p. And then this simplifies to alpha times beta, right? So that is r. This is 1 minus p. This is p in the negative binomial form. Now the variance is r times 1 minus p divided by p squared. And then when you simplify this, you get the same exact result. Well, that's all I have for today. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.